Belly fat refers to excess fat around the abdomen. Some of this fat is located inside the abdomen and enveloping the internal organs. This is considered most dangerous form of belly fat and is termed visceral fat. The secondary type of fat is subcutaneous, which is stored beneath the skin. While this can still pose health risks, it isn't deemed as hazardous as visceral fat. Generally it is difficult to distinguish person has excess visceral or internal fats or not, however, individuals with more visceral fat tend to have a larger waist circumference and exhibit an apple-shaped belly or a protruding abdomen. Now, why is visceral fat labeled as more dangerous? Because accumulation of visceral or internal fats, easy becomes hypoxic and fat cells start dying. When they die, they release inflammatory mediators and it causes systemic inflammation in the body. This inflammation damages tissues in the body, especially blood vessels. That's why it is importantly increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Inflammation damages cells, increases chance of mutations and cancer development. Furthermore inflammatory environment is favorable cancer growth. That's why visceral fat increases all cancer development risk by 20%. Third important mechanism how visceral fat act is its hormonal activity. It releases leptin, which in normal cases suppress appetite, but when it is secreted high quantity brain becomes desensitized to leptin, leading to leptin resistance. Means leptin is secreted but it is unable to suppress appetite. And when we say that visceral fats are more dangerous what we mean exactly. How much it increases risk compared to subcutaneous fats. To put it in perspective let's compare its health risks to subcutaneous fat health risks. Cardiovascular diseases, belly fat escalates the risk by roughly 300%, while subcutaneous fat obesity raises it by 50%. Diabetes, belly fat amplifies the risk by 50%, and subcutaneous fat by 25%. Cancer risks, belly fat raises the risk by 20%, and subcutaneous fat by around 10%. On a positive note, consuming whole grains, mono, and polyunsaturated fats, fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, green tea, and soluble fiber can help mitigate the risk of visceral fat accumulation. Lastly, concerning exercises, while spot reduction is deemed a myth, visceral fat appears more responsive to exercise than subcutaneous fat. Several studies, like those published in American Journal of Physiology, 2009, and Obesity, 2011, highlight the efficacy of aerobic exercise and HIIT in reducing visceral fat. Resistance training can also indirectly influence visceral fat by boosting the basal metabolic rate, BMR, due to increased muscle mass.